Think deep, trade smart. This video is presented by Meitou Investing. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Meitou. I am currently running another channel called Meitou Jiang Meigu. And this channel is an affiliate channel that is primarily designed for the English speaking audience. If you speak Chinese, you are more than welcome to join the other channel and you can find that link below in the video description. Today's video will be my first English video. The goal of this channel is to present you with the highest quality content. In order to produce this video, I have spent over a month preparing and I hope you will learn something at the end of the video and achieve your long-term investing goals. The 2020 stock market has given us many unpredictable surprises, both tragic and fortunate. But there are plenty of opportunities still waiting for us to explore in 2021. For this video, I have analyzed the best 10 stocks that I think should be on your watch list that has tremendous growth potential and high returns. I did not select these stocks because of any news trending or their popularity throughout 2020, but through my studies and analysis based on both internal and external factors relating to macroeconomic, industry opportunities, unusual market movements, and short-term trending causes. I believe that at the end of the video, even though you might not add any of the 10 stocks to your list, you will still have a clear idea of which direction the stock markets will go for the year of 2021. Because this video will cover up a lot of information and analysis, for your convenience, I have divided into two separate videos. For those who have not subscribed yet, don't forget to click the subscribe button so you won't miss out the other 5 stocks in the second video. And now, let's start with the first 5 stocks that I think will have a huge potential. Number 1. Apple, stock code AAPL, current market value 2.18 trillion. Among all the megatech companies, Apple is the ideal stock that everyone should consider on their list. If you look at it closely, you will see that it has a very strong and solid fundamental, excellent corporate culture, and a wide range of economic modes that can take days for us to discuss. For these reasons, Apple is the ideal company for long-term investing. And if we look at 2021 alone, Apple will still surprise you with its attractive growth potential. First of all, not so long ago, Apple introduced the MacBook Air equipped with its first self-designed M1 chip. This innovation, in other words, is subversive to Apple's current business model. In regards to Apple's M1 chip, market experts are excited to see its performance. It is more cost-effective at an affordable price with more integrated graphic and faster speed than any existing chip. And if we look at the markets, some consumers are buying the new MacBook only because of the M1 chip. Also, it is very predictable that Apple will make the M1 chip the standard for its MacBook series within 1-2 to two years. This change will increase MacBook series competitiveness, allowing Apple to expand its market shares in the PC market. Secondly, there are many evidence supporting the prediction on the sale of iPhone increasing significantly in 2021. That is because of the 5G service of iPhone 12. Whether you or any other Apple fans change iPhones regularly or occasionally, as the 5G network has become more as a phenomenon, you will need to buy the new iPhone regardless. Buying the new iPhone is not only an upgrade, but also keeping yourself up to the future standard. According to analysts, Apple is planning to increase the production of iPhone by 30% in the first half of 2021, up to 9.6 million iPhones per year. This prediction is also hinting at a significant growth of iPhone sales in the short term. And lastly, according to Reuters' latest news, Apple is planning to join the electronic vehicle market shortly and predicting its first electronic vehicle to be mass-produced as early as 2024. In the meantime, Reuters also states Apple will develop and produce its own batteries. The success of the M1 chip can prove that Apple can accomplish success on diversifying and expanding its product lines in the future. Plus, Apple's corporate culture of pursuing the ultimate user experience and its product success over pass on combining its software and hardware. The market is very looking forward to Apple's electronic vehicle. Because of all of those reasons I mentioned above, I think Apple's stock price will continue its strong growth in 2021. Number 2. Adobe Stock code ADBE, 
current market value, $229 billion. Adobe is a company that focuses on the creation of multimedia and creativity software products. Adobe's products covers pretty much anything you can imagine in regards to designing. Besides its most well-known PDF software, its products also include Photoshop, animation software Flash, video animation and effects software After Effects, audio editing software Audition, website designing software XD, and many others. Adobe's dominance in the designing business is equivalent to Google's dominance in the search engine business, the top and the only leading company in their specialized field. In my previous videos in my other channel, I have discussed Adobe. For those of you who wish to learn more about it, you can go back to it after watching this video. So, why did I add this stock to my list? The main reason is the expansion of content making over the past decades. 10 years ago, self-media specializing on text contents grew exponentially following the increasing number of users on Facebook, Twitter, and China's WeChat and Weibo's individual bloggers and public channels. And as technologies keep reshape the movements of our daily lives, user experience has shifted the focus from text contents to video content. It is just a matter of time for video contents to outpace text content. And we already see some symptoms of this transformation. Over the past few years, everything including entertainment, education, news media, and socializing, we are experiencing videos as a common experience in our daily activity. And now, I think that video content will be one of the biggest trending in the next 10 years. And Adobe, as the first content creation choice for corporations and individuals, is going to be the biggest winner of this transformation. You may ask me this question, why not invest in companies providing video platforms, such as China's recent rising star Bilibili.com, but instead invest in Adobe? Something you need to keep in mind is that video platforms are a very competitive market, particularly for those new starters that are looking bright over the long term. The risk is also very high and unpredictable. If we look at China as an example, in the first 10 years of 21st century, Text content platforms such as Renren.com, Douban.com, and Tianya.cn were looking so dominant in the market, but then they lost the majority of their market shares due to many different reasons. And now, we look at the video content market, the risks of for platform companies are significantly high and unpredictable. So, instead of making risky bets on these platforms, why not pick software providers such as Adobe that has the least risk? Because Adobe's economic modes are so wide and the content producer's reliance on its software, investing in Adobe both eliminates risk and provides very attractive returns. Number 3. Lemonade. Stock code LMND. Current market value, $8.4 billion. Lemonade is one of the disruptive technology companies that sells insurance using AI through its desktop and mobile apps. Its current business covers from home insurance to pet health insurance. Unlike traditional insurance companies, Lemonade developed a very high technical chatbot using machine learning to collect, manage, and match the customer's provided information to deliver insurance policy and handle claims. This innovation has significantly reduced the labor cost. By looking at this graph, the average sales of insurance per Lemonade workers are as high as 2500 which is way higher and way more efficient than any other traditional insurance giant. And because its labor cost is cheaper, Lemonade's insurance premium is much lower than any other insurance companies. Besides sales through AI, Lemonade also brought changes to traditional methods of processing payment. Over the past, when an insurance company sells insurance to you, the company is profiting from the monthly premium you pay. But this practice sometimes causes worries for customers that insurance company may have sold insurance at an overvalued price. Instead, Lemonade states that only 20% of the premium are received as profits, and that the rest are used for future indemnity. And after the indemnification, if there is any remaining balance, Lemonade will donate the amount to charity and other non-profit organizations. This may look like Lemonade is trying to build a peaceful world, but the deeper implication is that it undermines the conflict of interest between you and your insurance company. Instead of having no idea where your premium goes and how it is calculated, Lemonade makes the transaction of your premium highly transparent and increases your confidence in their services. 
With the relatively lower premium pays and the highly transparent system, Lemonade has won the heart among young people. And these young people are those who we call the millennials, who are primarily targeted by Lemonade. I'm really looking forward to companies reshaping traditional business practices, particularly those companies with disruptive technologies. However, introducing disruptive technologies can be risky, and its outcomes are unpredictable, just like Facebook's initial launch in America or blockchain technology. But adopting new technologies in traditional business model is less risky than in new business models. In Lemonade's case, its adoption of AI considers both the experience of predecessors who worked in the insurance field for many years and the consistent market demand for quality services. With the combination of these two factors, the competition in the market can also facilitate the success of adopting new technologies in traditional business. I also think that AI is the most feasible and disruptive technology that will reshape the world, and I will make a video in the future just on the AI industry. For the insurance business, I believe that the transformation of replacing human labor with AI will be the future in this market. For AI technologies, first mover advantage is the key to stay competitive. The earlier you adopt AI means that you can collect more data and have more time to train your machines more efficiently. These data will give the company a huge advantage later in the competition when AI technology becomes the phenomenon. And as a lead in corporate insurance, Lemonade's future looks very bright and luminous. Over the past two months, Lemonade's stock price went up rapidly, which further proves my theory and analysis. But this also puts some pressure on those of you who have not yet owned a share of Lemonade. I think if you're someone who are looking forward to Lemonade's long-term growth like me, you can still buy this stock at the current price. However, because this company is still in its earlier development stage, the risk is still high. If you're still not sure, then you can wait for any future correction on the stock price, which can be a good spot to buy in. Number 4. Goldman Sachs, Stock Code GS, Current Market Value $108 billion. I think in 2021, GS is still going to keep up its growth as in 2020. One of the reasons is that long-term interest rates will increase by the amounts from 0.85% to 1.5% based on the current prediction of 2021. Generally, when long-term interest rates increases, GS's revenue increases. Another reason is that 2021's economy will start to recover. This recovery both reduces bad debts that GS owns and increases the demand for credit loans, which will increase GS's revenue and profit margin. The last reason is the great performance of equity markets that will generate strong revenue to GS following the economic recovery. And with benefits from both the Federal Reserve maintaining low rates and economic recovery, we're seeing 2021 to continue the growth as we had experienced in 2020. And with GS's banking attributes and the predictable higher return from investments, making it one of the biggest winners in 2021. Besides the analysis from the previous video, recently, the Federal Reserve has also lifted restrictions on stock repurchase and dividend distribution of U.S. commercial banks. GS, who had no financial issues even at the toughest time during the pandemic, has enough cash to repurchase its stocks and increase its stock price. Notably, since the 2008 market crash, whether due to the investors' decreasing confidence to U.S. commercial banks, or the suppression from lower interest rates. Stocks in the banking sector was never a popular choice for investors, and its growth was never on the same level compared to other popular stocks. But when we look at 2020 as a whole, we can see that there is a rising confidence on the banking sector. People are realizing that the banking sector's profitability and the ability to withstand risk are over the expectation. I think as the economic movement starts to recover, in addition to the factors and advantages mentioned above, 2021 is very likely the year of high return for GS and for the entire banking sector to prove that they are the most underrated stocks. Number 5. Salesforce. Stock code CRM. Current market value $226 billion. Salesforce is known for its cloud-based software that provides customer relationship management services. It has been in a very dominant position due to its convenience and fair price in the market. How dominant? 
Well, Salesforce's market share is higher than the combined market share from the second to the fourth companies in the same business. The greatest part of CRM's product is that it can customize each customer's individual needs and possess a high customer stickiness ratio. As a result, it also has a very strong economic moat similar to Adobe. By September of 2020, CRM was one of the most popular stocks. At some point, it was even more popular than Tesla. But then its stock price crashed after announcing an acquisition. This acquisition is the main reason why I chose CRM on my list. This may sound contradictory, but please let me explain. The acquisition was on a company called Slack for around $28 billion in US dollars. But the deal was criticized as overvalued because Slack at the time was valued at around $18 billion. As a result, after the deal was closed, CRM stock price slumped to 15% and market value evaporated by about $36 million within just 5 days. Clearly, if the acquisition was at a fair value, then the case was not an overspending case for CRM, rather a deal that should never take place. Because if we look at CRM's stock price, based on a simple math, CRM plus Slack was clearly 1 plus 1 equals less than 2 situation. But something that not many investors know is that when an investment bank evaluates a company's valuation after an acquisition, they do not look at the stock price of the sold company. Rather, they look at the overall valuation of the merged company. The initial purpose of the acquisition is that company A, by acquiring company B, both companies can work together and perform more efficiently. In other words, the goal is to make 1 plus 1 equals more than 2. This increment is normally known as synergy. So for a company A, when it acquires company B, the exceeded money it paid to acquire B is to pay for the synergy that it desired as a result of the deal. From my point of view, the Slack deal was ideal for CRM's long-term goal. For me, I use Slack on a day-to-day -day basis. It was designed to be the ideal communication software at a workplace. Slack is a software that you can enjoy and comfortably use that you will not consider abandoning after using it. As a chatting tool, the user experience it creates even surpasses WeChat and WhatsApp to some extent. As a communication tool, its functionality and convenience are much better than email. Also, both Slack and CRM's product positioning fits well with each other. Perhaps the deal is not going to make a huge impact in the short term, but I think Slack's strategic implication to CRM's long-term planning is very critical because the communication software is urgently needed for CRM's customer management services. In my opinion, when the two platforms combine together, it will increase user stickiness and a wider economic moat for CRM. I think the investors have overreacted to the Slack deal, which provides a good opportunity to buy in now since CRM is at a relatively low price. At the end, I'm really excited to see the Slack and CRM to achieve that 1 plus 1 over 2 result in 2021. Here are the first 5 stocks on my list for today's video. Due to the length of the video, I apologize that I could not go through all the details at once. And before you make your own investment decision, please don't copy and paste to somebody else's work. I do own shares of these stocks that I have just analyzed because it fits well with my strategy. So you should have your strategy on your own and you should always consider advice from different sources and have your own thoughts. If there are any companies you wish to appear in my future video for further analysis, please leave a comment below with the name of that company. I will consider them as a topic for my future videos. The second half of the video will be more exciting and I really hope you don't miss it. If you like my videos, please click the subscribe button. Your supports are much appreciated.